we have this mindset or this understanding that when we give our lives to Jesus, we kind of expect that everything in our lives must just fall into place and suddenly we become perfect. God is keeping His eye on us yes. to guard us from injury or loss in our spirit and in our soul and our body. Yes. But the soul and the body is a process. That's it. The spirit happens instantly. The older will serve the younger because when we're born, then we're born of flesh. His word brings healing and health to all our flesh. My name is Jenny and welcome to The Higher Life. Now in this series, it's all about the well-being of our souls. In fact, we are going to learn how important every thought is that we think. When we get victory over the area of our thoughts, we are going to be able to walk in the fullness of blessing and healing and everything that Jesus won for us on that cross. Now, on my panel today to help us get into the richness of God's Word concerning the well-being of our souls, I would like for you to welcome Christine Blumstein, who is working with Kenneth Copeland Ministries for Africa. We also have Katie Souza from Expected End Ministries in the USA. Have Dr. Michelle Stradon from Eagles Wings Ministry. What an amazing ministry that is touching lives all over the world. This session is all about the soul and in our first program we are going to be dealing with the power of our thoughts and how every single thought affects every area of our lives. Let's get into the Word together. Well, ladies, here we are ready to share the Word of God together. I am so excited to have every one of you here. I really appreciate you being here. Christine, are you excited? I am so excited and I know that God is doing something new with this program and it's going to give you the nations and the continents. Amen. It's a privilege to be here. Oh, thank so you. Good. Katie? Yes. So amazing that I get to be here with all of these amazing women. Mm. Christine, so anointed in the word, Michelle, mm. and the skills she has in the in science. And with you here, thank you for having us, Jen. Oh, thank it's, you so it's much. It's really, really great. Michelle, lovely to have you here. This is a real treat for me. Thank you, Jenny. It's really a privilege and an honor to join with you and really looking forward to what the Holy Spirit is going to do. Oh, absolutely. And for those of you who are watching, you are in for a feast of the word. I am so excited about this subject matter. And it's such a broad topic, the topic of the soul. You know, in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, it speaks about how in Christ, we have become brand new creations. But Katie, what I've found that really is a misconception, and I think it brings a lot of even disappointment yeah. in uh, uh, the life of a newborn Christian, is yeah. that we have this mindset or this understanding that when we give our lives to Jesus, from the moment we say yes to Him and we accept Him as Lord and Savior, we kind of expect that everything in our lives must just fall into place and suddenly we become perfect. But it doesn't really happen that way, does it? No, no. The new creation, it, 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 is, it creates confusion because why are we still cussing people out <laughs> if we are new creations? Right. Why are we still getting angry and upset? It's because when we do become a new creation, it's in our spirit, man. Right. When Christ comes to live in us, it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. And that means our spirit is instantly perfect. That's 1 Colossians 1, uh, verse 27. Correct. Okay, but we are three-part beings. You know, Thessalonians uh, 1, 5, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 talks about how God of peace will sanctify us wholly and may our spirit, soul, and body be preserved entirely until He's coming, right? So three there's three parts. parts. And that scripture is so amazing because it tells us a lot. It tells us that we are three-part beings. 
okay, and that God wants to purify us. It says, may he sanctify or purify us. So he wants to purify every part of us, you know, our body, our soul, and our spirit. Our spirit is instantly purified when we receive Christ as Lord and Savior. Correct. But now the body and the soul have to become purified. And the Lord says, it, it says here that we will be preserved entirely, our entire being. And that preserved means to mean, it means in the, in the Strong's to be guarded from loss or injury by keeping your eye on. God is keeping his eye on us. Yes. To guard us from injury or loss in our spirit and in our soul and our body. Yes. But the soul and the body is a process. That's it. The spirit happens instantly. That is it. But the soul gets wounded by things like trauma and sin and generational things, and the body follows suit. It follows whatever's happening in the soul. The scripture says in, in John, 3 John 2, it says, you will prosper and be in health. Even, Even as, as your soul as prospers. Your soul prospers. Absolutely. So we have to start continuing to be renewed, preserved, healed in the soul, and then the body will also be healed and renewed. Correct. Yes. Very good. Christine, it is a process, right? It is a process. Therefore, Jesus says mm. that you should take up your own cross. Mm. He said, take you, mm. and it's you that take up your cross. And wow. he said, daily. Yes. You have to take up your cross. Mm, yes. And daily means that you have to renew your mind to the word of God. Mm. Jesus also said that the older will serve the younger. Yes. Because when we're born, then we're born of flesh. Right. And the flesh and the soul will, reserve, will serve the younger. That's your, your newborn spirit wow, that God is talking that about. That's very that good. The, the flesh... The soul and the body has to serve the spirit man. Mm -hmm. And how do you get your soul and your body to serve the spirit man? Mm -hmm. It's when you meditate upon the word of God daily. Right. You mm -hmm. feed your spirit man. Because so many of us walk around and we starve our spirit man. Right. Your pastor right. Right. cannot feed you with one snack on a Sunday. But you have to mm -hmm. feed your body a solid meal, your spirit man, a solid meal every day. Okay. And guess what? You cannot overdose on it. Right. Mm. That's you what can't. Right. You That's... can't overdose on it. Yes. If you feed your spirit man and it becomes stronger, mm. and then when your spirit man is stronger, then your body and soul will have no choice, option but That's to follow so the I'm spirit man. This whole idea about there's a change in dominance. Yeah. So let's just, I want to take this step for step. We have got the programs to do this in. And I, I want this foundation to be so solid concerning the soul because this whole session is going to be about the soul. So just to recap again, we have three parts to us. Mm. We have our spirit, which is our spirit man, which becomes born again the moment we meet Jesus Christ. He makes us completely new. In fact, the word says we just like him. Jesus, the spirit of God comes and lives on the inside of us. We have our soul, which is the part that I want you to speak about now, Michelle, about being uh, the part of our intellect and our emotions and our free will. Let's get into that because the whole thing, the process that we're speaking about, where here we have our soul who has always led or called the shots. Mm -hmm. Now with our newborn yeah. spirit, Christine, which is what you were telling about. Yeah. Now we have a newborn spirit. Suddenly there's got to be a change in order. Mm -hmm. And now we have to have the spirit calling the shots. shots. Now we're going to get into that whole process as the programs come. Yeah. But let's get into the nitty gritty of this soul area. So Michelle, explain to us again about the soul. What makes up the soul? Yeah, so... Um, as you mentioned, the soul consists of three parts, as we can also see from Scripture. Your soul consists of your mind, which is your intellect, what you use to, to think on. Um, then you have your free will, which you use to make decisions. And then it consists of your emotions. So right. that's the three parts of our soul. So as um, Katie and uh, Christine were saying, that um, after we are born again and our spirits are united with God, our souls still remain unchanged in that um, we still have to bring our free will and our mind and our emotions back into alignment to God's word. Absolutely. And, you know, I just think of how everything that they did,
did in the Old Testament, so to speak, is a picture in the physical of what we need to do in our lives spiritually. So, for example, just as Adam and Eve um, were in a garden of Eden in the physical, we now need to cultivate the garden of our souls to, to create a new garden of Eden, which is built, you know, from the washing of the water of the word. Beautiful. And uh, in doing that, it's not just a spiritual thing and it's not just in our soul, but eventually it affects our body in that we start building memory trees of life that literally brings healing and health to all our flesh. Um, as Christine was mentioning, the importance of meditating on the Word of God. In uh, Proverbs 4, verse 20 to 22, for example, it says that His Word brings healing and health to all our flesh. And that's 100% medi medically correct, as we will explore in detail as we go through this teaching on how literally on a physical level, the chemicals released in response to thoughts from meditating on His Word literally brings healing and health to and our flesh. And there's an actual physical reaction to the thoughts that are in tune with God's word. It's, it's brilliant. There's so much we're going to get into. But Katie, you mentioned in James, there was a scripture in James yeah, that you were speaking about. In James, it says the word has the power to save our souls. Yes. That word power there, uh, is save is sozo, which means to save someone from a disease. Right. So we get diseased in our thoughts. We get diseased in our bodies. But the word has the power to, to save us from those wrong thinkings, from the, <clears throat> from the disorders that come from what's happening in our soul and how it's affecting our body. Absolutely. I mean, that's why it says in 2 Corinthians, we're supposed to cast down those imaginations right. and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity the, every thought to obedience to Christ. So the word helps us do that. And when the word comes in and, men, and brings healing to our soul, then the rest of our bodies, souls, finances, marriages, relationships, everything else profits. Right. But yes. it is Again, a process, process. Christine. Process. It is a process. Um, Michelle mentioned that our thought life uh, affect our body and what we think, and we have to make sure that we meditate on the Word of God. I'm sure a lot of people don't know that we actually think 150,000 to 180 thoughts a day. Wow. A day. Wow. And we have to pull down those thoughts. We have to pull it down because we think so many thoughts that we don't think it's important, but we have to pull down a thought every six seconds. Every six seconds. You have to pull down the thought, and you have to pull it down by judging it against a truth, the truth, or is it a lie? Our thoughts affect, in fact, when you think negative thoughts or you don't think thoughts that line up with the Word of God, it affects 1,400 chemicals. It releases 1,400 chemicals into our bodies. Mm -hmm. And those chemicals absolutely affect 30 hormones, whether good or bad. It yeah, affects 30 it. hormones. That's so you it. have to renew your mind absolutely. to line up with the Word of God. Right. So when you think positive thoughts and you think thoughts that line up with the Word of God and you judge the thought, against the truth or lie, then your body will respond positively. Yes, absolutely. Now, Michelle, this is your language, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Come on, tell us about um, that connection, that the, the whole soul connection with our bodies. Um, yes, so in science, they're showing how um, our body is affected physically, as Christine mentioned, by our thoughts. And they're tracing back the ma majority of diseases to... Um, what we would call poisonous mindsets, mindsets, which are ways of thinking that don't match up with the Word of God. Right. For example, fear, anxiety, and stress has been well documented in medic many medical journals as the cause of many, many diseases. Right. And um, for example, it, um, in Luke 21 verse 26, it says, in the last days, men's hearts will fail them because of fear. And that's true on the medical side. Um, there's many articles and uh, research that's been done in medicine showing how our thoughts are, and affects our hearts that leads to diseases of the heart caused by fear. Mm -hmm. And so all these thinking patterns, bitterness, unforgiveness, anger, rage, resentment, a low self-esteem, rejection, unworthiness, all of these things affects our body in a destructive way. And as Christine mentioned, it doesn't line up with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So... 
a very important scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, that we to bring every thought captive mm. to the obedience mm. of Christ. And, Absolutely. you know, there's an enormous reality mm. to that, not just spiritually, but also from a medical and a physical perspective, because right. it literally is life or death, right. wow. depending on the choice that we wow. make. And as Abba Father said in Deuteronomy, I set before you the choice of life or death, and not just spiritually, but, you know, it's going to affect the health of our soul and our body. And so we've got to test everything that comes into our mind against the Word of God. And if we have thoughts of fear, for example, that doesn't match God's Word because in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 it says God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so if it's a thought of fear, it's not matching up with His Word. And, uh, um, you know, as you were saying, we need to, on purpose, <laughs> use the, our free will in our soul to make the choice to chuck out those thoughts and to rather replace that with the truth of God's word. Okay, so obviously what we're saying, it's like, oh, there's so much. There is, you know, and I want to keep breaking it down into baby steps. My dad always had the saying when I was growing up, and I actually feel bad because I keep on quoting him and it's not very nice. But the, the thing is, he used to tell me, Jenny, if I got upset, he'd say, oh man, sticks and stones yep. will break your bones, but words can never hurt you. And he always used to say that, but man, that is a lie from the pit of hell, <laughs> isn't it? That is not the truth at all. And I remember once I started understanding that actually our words really come from thoughts <laughs> and that they are seeds that produce thoughts um, after their own kind. And so I really, I think what we need to bring across again and again and again is that, and this is the main thing. Your salvation was by grace and it was a gift from God. You could do nothing to earn that except say yes. And by faith, which he gave you, you received him and you became born again. And your spirit man became brand new. The Holy Spirit himself created you as a temple, his temple. And he came to live on the inside of you. But now, from that moment on, the responsibility shifts to us. Amen. And it is our responsibility to make sure that our souls, which is our minds, our intellect, our thinking, our reasoning, as well as our free will and our emotions that are attached to that, which, Michelle, you're going to get even into more detail about how every thought, and I know that, Christine, you spoke about that, Every thought we think has a chemical connection to an emotion. I don't even know if I said that right. But emotions are connected to us chemically to every thought. There is a thought and those chemicals, they go, and you, you'll say it much better, they're going to affect every part of our physical body. Yes. So the way God made us is even though, like, like Him, He is three separate, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He made us three parts. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a physical body. But you can't separate one from the other. While we are here, we are connected together and we affect each other. So everything that you allow to come into this mind, every thought that you choose to make meditate on and you're going to hear that word again and again and again because and we're going to speak about meditated thoughts what they actually mean that thought that you choose to think about and not cast out which we're going to go into detail about yeah. how to take it captive and get it out thoughts that should not belong there and how they even get there we're going to get into all of that coming up soon but every thought that you think is going to affect your emotions and your physical body True. And it's your responsibility. You can't expect your pastor to do this. <laughs> you can't expect your husband or your wife to do this. You can't no. expect anybody to do this. It becomes your sole responsibility to be able, your sole responsibility. Yes, <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> you have the responsibility of your soul to be able to make sure that it, it keeps your health right they keeps everything right but you don't do it on your own do you no. yeah. we have the holy spirit Amen. and we have the word of god and right. we have the blood of jesus right. so i'm so excited and we and we kind of running out of our first program's time um, but we're going to get into the same subject again laying down again the foundation of the soul and how it connects yes. to our physical bodies and our emotions 
Now, if you have any questions regarding what we are speaking about, the subject matter, I, I want you to know we are ready to answer you. You can email us at highlife at myfaithtv.com and we are going to get right back to you on any of those subjects. But before we get into our next program, any last words? Emotions. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, well, the emotions are its so crucial. What you're thinking in your mind is going to affect how you're feeling. And people are feeling oppressed, depressed, anxious, worried, and everything else. But they have to, when that happens and they're feeling overwhelmed, like, oh my gosh, I can't even break out of this feeling, they have to gauge what's happening in my mind. What am I letting myself meditate on? I mean, the scripture is full of those emotions, those negative emotions coming from the soul. Psalm 35 12 says, to, uh, they reward me for evil to the sorrow of my soul. Of Psalm 42 5 says, why are you cast down? Oh, my, my soul. soul. Why are you disquieted within me? Psalm 77 2 says, my soul refuses to be comforted. Um, Psalm 88 3 says, my soul is full of trouble. If you can't get comfort, if you're feeling disquieted, if you're feeling emotional, it's because there's something going on in your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions. This is good. Very, very good. Michelle, you were going to say something. Just very quickly, an analogy that sums up all that you've shared and we've discussed in this session. Um, in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 to 20, it talks about how our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I'm um, busy uh, studying and discovering how the way that God created the tabernacle in Scripture and later the temple was built from that is actually a blueprint for how he designed the human body. Wow. And... Um, <laughs> And the seven organ systems of the body matches with the seven items of furniture in the tabernacle. And it's bringing out a lot of revelation on um, why certain spiritual strongholds affect certain parts of the body and all of that. But um, what I wanted to say is that in the tabernacle, there's three rooms. And that represents the three parts of our being. So you've got the outer court, which is our body. You've got the inner, part, inner court, which is our soul. And then the holy of holies, which is like spirit. our spirit. And so... Um, if you imagine the three parts of our being, like a house with three rooms like that, when, before we're born again, all three rooms are dark and black and our spirits are cut off from God. The moment we get born again, everything that's of God and everything that he is is deposited in our spirit and our spirit becomes whole and perfect. And so our holy of holies, you can imagine like this beautiful golden white palace. Yes. However, our soul and our body is still like... Uh, if you can imagine a building that's in ruins because we still have all these negative mindsets and as a result our body is a mess because our body is affected by our soul, our soul. Yes. so our soul and body is still in a mess and that's why in philippians 2 verse 12 it says we need to work out our own salvation mm -hmm. with uh, yeah, fear and trembling mm -hmm. so it's not that it wasn't complete at the cross it's just that after salvation comes a journey of sanctification right. yes. which we see in 1 thessalonians 5 verse 23 that katie yeah. mentioned now, now michelle i'm going to stop mm -hmm. you there because when we start our program we're going to go straight back into the tabernacle yeah, again right. i think that's going so to be good. a brilliant really? place to start yeah. and from there we're going to build on how the, it's all about understanding who you are. How can you fix what's broken when you don't even understand anything about yourself? And I, I really believe that the time has come that an understanding comes to the church. And that's what Proverbs says. It says that have wisdom, get wisdom. And when you have that wisdom, you will get understanding. And with that understanding comes everything that Christ has promised us. It's, it's your time. It's your time. It's our time to live the lives that Jesus had for us. Thank you so much for being a part of this program. Remember, High Life at MyFaithTV.com. You can email all your questions, all your testimonies to us, and we can't wait to hear from you. Higher Life Seasons are now available through the Faith app. If we can just have that truth to pull us up, That's right. then you're not going to hear the sound of the negativity. That's right. View the latest episodes today by downloading the Faith app on Google Play or the App Store.
Well, this has been an amazing time together. We have really got into the Word of God and we have had such an amazing time learning about the soul and how important our thought life is. I would love to just thank the studio audience here for being such a blessing. Thank you, studio audience. And also, let's thank our guests for being such a well of information for us. And we certainly aren't going to forget you at home. Thank you for every single one of you who are watching these programs. We are so blessed that you can come into this and be a part of what God is doing, enabling us to become free in the area of our souls, where we learn to take the truth of God's word and apply it to our lives to change every single thing about us. Now, in our next program, we're going to continue with this teaching on the soul. And we're going to emphasize how important it is to take every thought we meditate on, understand where that thought comes from and how to deal with it. God bless you and goodbye. The same spirit that forgives mm -hmm. is the same spirit that heals, mm -hmm. is the same spirit that prospers. The same spirit, it is freely given unto us. In fear and trembling, we walk out our salvation by working that power that's in us to heal the soul, and then the body follows suit. The moment that we become born again and we accept Jesus into our lives, instantly our spirit is reunited with Abba Father. That's how faith comes, doesn't it? Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the truth of God's Word.